So yeah, thank you for having me, and uh, I'm happy to be here to give a short intro about like open source silicon ecosystem. And so my name is Johan Frozin. Uh, online I go by Propi. I joined uh, Google like in 2011, so a little bit more uh, 12 years ago. Uh, I've been doing a developer relations there. So I'm a developer relations engineer, meaning that I'm focusing on uh, improving the developer experience for a variety of uh, Google developer products. I started working on uh, some of the cloud developer products of Google first. Uh, then I worked a little bit on Android too, and more recently uh, I've worked on IoT and hardware things. Uh, this year, or last year, I joined a new team uh, at Google called the hardware uh, toolchain team. And uh, my presentation is about like uh, what this team is doing and how we are trying to build an open source silicon ecosystem. So the core team mission is that it's to make custom silicon easier to build for everyone at scale, just like software. Like, uh, if you can think of something like, uh, I know many of you are, are, are older developer and you, you're familiar with like some optimization file that you can, uh, flag that you can pass to your compiler. And sometimes you go, uh, you max like those optimization possibility. And there is nothing that you can do in software to optimize further. So our vision is that we'd like you to help you to go to the next step, uh, to help you to optimize your stuff in hardware. And usually the gap between uh, jumping from a software product to a pro uh, hardware product is pretty big. And we'd like to make it that as easy as just changing your compiler flag. So we're not there yet, but that's like the vision. So imagine that you have an optimization flag and you can like say that you want to optimize stuff in silicon and then give you the hardware design to optimize like that uh, translation unit. And in order to get there, we found out that there are like missing pieces. So in uh, ICAD in 2020, like uh, the team founder actually like uh, released a, pro, uh, a paper there called the missing pieces of open design enablement. Enable, he, he identified like four things that are missing for creating like a, an open ecosystem in hardware that could strive as much as the software one. So first like uh, open source PDK. So in software world, we take it for granted that uh, we have like some open source SDK and library that we can build or, or, or work on. And uh, often, like uh, our work is consist on remixing like a few libraries that we want to produce something original. Like it doesn't really work like this in hardware. Like uh, the very uh, lower level of the stack, which is a PDK, you can think of it as an SDK for hardware. It's the thing that defines like the specification of uh, the foundry, uh, of the process of the foundry, the thing that will allow you to manufacture something uh, with that foundry. It's the interface of the foundry. And those things currently require, most of them require an NDA. And so like you can't even start uh, developing your hardware project until you sign a contract with the foundry. The other thing is like, uh, and so we realize that if we want to allow people to do custom hardware, we have to have open source PDK. The other thing is the silicon toolchain. So we take it for granted in, in software that most of the or compiler or debugger uh, optimization tool are uh, open source and you can run it on any computer and you can run it in the cloud like it doesn't really work like this you know uh, it wasn't really working like this in hardware like a few years ago like most of the tool were proprietary you had like proactive license cost to get started and even more important you couldn't run like those tool really freely or on the cloud or on weird architecture um, the other thing is that like because there is this bottom of the stack with the tooling and the pdk uh, that were mostly proprietary. Um, it meant that basically all the building blocks that people were building on top of those two were also tied to proprietary solution. So there was like very little reuse of like other people and sharing between people design. And the last thing is like it's, it costs a lot to manufacture silicon. It can cost like uh, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars for to just to like a simple batch on a very, very old technology. It could cost like as millions of dollars to do something on a more modern process, meaning that the cost of error is huge. Like if you make a design mistake, like uh, it's gonna cost you like uh, thousands or millions of dollars. And so it's really prohibitive for people to um, get into that field because like uh, in order to learn something, you have to make errors. And if this error could you, cost you a huge amount of, uh, of money, you're not really incentivized to learn this. And so we identify that if we basically provide open source PDK, an open source silicon toolchain, if we provide an easy way for people to generate blocks that they can share and reuse, and if we provide them with cheaper and faster manufacturing options, 
we can create like uh, our bootstrap uh, an open source ecosystem that would be compare comparable with uh, software. And so that's what we try to do with that team. So um, we partner with uh, uh, a few foundry uh, across like uh, the world. Uh, so the first one is Skywater. And we managed like, to convince them to open source uh, a PDK for one of their older 130 nanometer technology. So there is like two variants of the, uh, the PDK. So there is a Sky 130A, that's like a, a regular CMOS process. And there is the Sky 130B, which is as, uh, the same process with a VRAM cell. Uh, so resistive RAM capability added. And that was like two years ago. Uh, last year, we managed to convince another foundry, Global Foundry, to open source um, uh, their uh, PDK for their 180 nanometer uh, technology. So it was very important for the ecosystem because like we went from one to two. So the, the gap between zero to one was big, but, uh, and a lot of the tooling actually started like supporting like this Skywater PDK. And the gap between one to two was also very big because like all the tooling had to kind of remove the things that were specific to Skywater to start like supporting another PDK. And, uh, like uh, this year, there was also something that was very uh, good for the ecosystem that happened. So we had this foundry in Austria called IHP that uh, released their open source PDK, their PDK, an open source PDK for their 100 uh, nanometer technology without talking to our team at all. So uh, before, like, uh, like Google kind of went to this foundry, tried to lobby them or convince them to open source this PDK. And we IHP was like a, the first example of an organic uh, release of uh, a foundry that didn't consult at all with us and that start releasing like their technology. And later this year, we hope that we'll be able to release like a 90 nanometer uh, PDK for the Sky 90 FD uh, um, uh, process. And uh, so once you have the PDK, uh, you can run like a, a toolchain on top of it. And so we support like uh, many of those uh, open source tools uh, from that ecosystem. There is tool that uh, we develop ourselves. So like for example, XCS is an high level synthesis toolkit that Google develop uh, in house. And that we make sure that this tool like support like the various PDK uh, that we that got open sourced. Uh, we rely for synthesis on um, on a tool called Yosis that's very well known also inside the FPGA ecosystem. For place and route, we rely on open road and with a flow called open lane. And for um, the last step, which is producing a file that you send to the foundry for manufacturing, we rely on Magic and Kaliot. And so all these kind of toolchain give you an idea on how you can go to a high level description uh, that's really close to source code that describes the functionality that you want to accelerate. So in our case, like it's a X file. That um, it's a syntax like close to Rust that allows you to describe like an algorithm that you want to create hardware for. And then you go to Verilog, which is like something that gets uh, really tied to, it's basically, an, it can get synthesized into a netlist that match like uh, the process that you want to use. And then like this netlist get blast uh, uh, with like the cell on natural silicon dye. And that's like what the left and the deaf are about. And then you stream that into a GDS format, which is describing the actual polygon that are being sent to the foundry for fabrication. And like all these toolchain can allow you to like produce this file like uh, using all the open source tool. And once you have the PDK and you have the tool, you still need a way to manufacture those chips. And like I mentioned before, like it could cost like uh, tens of thousands or maybe like hundreds of thousands of dollars to manufacture chip on those old, even on those older uh, technology. So we started um, for the two years uh, uh, we've been running like uh, an open uh, MPW shutter program um, that basically comes from no cost uh, to the community. Like the community uh, only need to produce like an open source design that's reproducible with the open source tool to enroll into that program. And uh, we've been selecting like 40 projects on each shutter round uh, to get manufactured. And so like uh, at the end, like you get like a board like this with a little custom silicon chip on it. And you can like start um, like validating that the silicon result that you have actually match like uh, the, the intent of your design. Like every uh, single chip come with a user area that you see here where you can put your own logic and a little like resize chip on the bottom that can help you like troubleshoot your design. And that's like one of the picture of the wafer that got uh, manufactured on one of the first one. So we've seen an increasing engagement uh, from the community on the shuttle. So we run like nine shuttle on this program. 
And like uh, here you can see, like uh, we started with only like 40 projects, but then 55, and on the last shuttle we had as most as 150 projects that got submitted. And so it means that we have accumulated like a pool of more than uh, 700 designs uh, that are fully open source and reproducible with the open source tool. So the tool have changed a lot, so it could be challenging to reproduce like one of the earlier ones uh, with like the newest version of the tool, but still the source is available. Like uh, anybody could like look at the project and anybody could try to reuse like the bits that are there. And we've seen engagement from all over the world on this program. So that's like kind of a picture of like the, the breakdown of project by country for one of the latest run that we run, like GF MPW0. And so, so it's not only the United States, we've seen like, very good um, engagement from, uh, from country in APAC, uh, like Japan, India. Um, and currently we are uh, busy with the community trying to bring up like the silicon for the second shuttle, the MPW2 one. And here you can see various example of people like playing with the ball, like validating um, like that silicon is actually working and like uh, kind of posting like the result online. I wanted to showcase like three projects that we've seen uh, on the this, uh, second shuttle where we've got like good results. So that one is like from uh, an actual professional, like a sub designer from Intel that has like 20 experience in hardware design. And so he did like this little RIS-5 um, microcontroller that's uh, compatible with Arduino. And like um, it has like a, a, an SDRAM memory controller on board. It also have a quad SPI like interface. And he was able like, to get like his chip booting and validate that the silicon was working. And when it, something that he said is that he, like, he has been in this industry for a long time. He, he wouldn't think that it would be possible for him to kind of build uh, like a custom silicon directly from his home, like from his home laptop, and being able to manufacture it for free. So someone else uh, that I thought was like uh, worth bringing up uh, was like GetCat with like their, uh, the project that they did with uh, their university uh, from the Elderberg University. So what they did is that they did a custom FPGA. So they implemented like an FPGA fabric uh, using the Skywater program. So you see the case of Skywater uh, process. So there is a, a tiny amount of loot there. It's only 100 loots, but um, the, the achievement is impressive because here they were able to run like uh, um, a custom uh, a custom FPGA logic using an open source FPGA toolchain targeting a chip that didn't exist before now uh, running on a FPGA uh, a custom FPGA fabric. So the the amount of things that could fail there uh, inside that stack is like impressive. Like uh, the toolchain couldn't could possibly not work. Like the design could be flawed. Like the silicon could also be. Uh, problematic and like they were able to validate that silicon and validate and here you see like in the middle they have a little FPGA demo that turned, uh, that ran on their fabric and that show it working and so yeah that was like uh, impressive that they managed to get that uh, working on a on a brand new uh, open source PDK and the last one is like kind of uh, dial well into the narrative of democratizing uh, IC fabrication. So it comes from an online course called Zero to Asics, um, where they actually, instead of using like the, the whole uh, chip area for just one design, what they did is that they run that course online uh, without really asking us for any permission. Uh, but it's just under uh, under like our shuttle and not submitted one design, but submitted 16 design from the school uh, from the this course uh, into one project slot. And like uh, most of the people on that, uh, I think like uh, 12 of the people of the 16 were actually first time designer. They, they never did an hardware design before. And they were going through that course curriculum and at the end like were able to submit their own design. And so it also show like how the, the, the community can, if you give like the community like constraint, like for example, you can fit like uh, um, inside that amount of silicon area they will build like their own process and their own learning material and they will kind of adapt to this constraint and try to build something else. And I mean, I think it's very impressive what they managed to do here because they managed to get a lot more people uh, on top of this infrastructure that we set up uh, with a um, better learning experience that we could have built. Okay, so the other thing I want to tell you is to uh, like, please, if you're interested in hardware, like feel free to join this community. We have a Slack channel with more than uh, 4,000 members in it, and we have like this uh, website called developer.google.com and this blog post that explains a little bit more. 
and I have a talk about that where I will actually go inside running those tools uh, with you um, on Friday. So if you're interested, feel free to come there. Yes, yeah, sorry, I went over.